create irritation in your own mouth. When we say you have to say these words, Shakespeare would have obviously pondered and chosen very carefully how he was going to weight those sentences. What's a taxi? Don't know. It sounds nasty. So I think it's a shit of wood. prickly out. Yes, yeah, prickly. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's um, a resonance with William Morris there, as who said that you shouldn't have anything in your home mm. that you didn't consider to be both beautiful and useful. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Combining that, the functional with the, the beauty of design. Mm. Mm. So that's the opposite of that, right? Mm. Mm. As a husband, I'm concerned because I'm neither beautiful nor useful. So. <laughs> well, it's <a> <laughs> 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 I didn't hear that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> FC said it's in the eye of the beholder. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> well, both of them. Right. <laughs> In both these abjurations, note that pruning of the overweening is the essential in, provide, in provoking flower and fruit, as well in, as in toppling, sorry, topping crescent weeds. In many such examples, Shakespeare turns the minds of kings to their grounded substance. It is not surprising that the term real estate, as applied to land, denotes as well the tangible, the real, and the royal. Real is the Spanish word, by the way, for royal. They both come from the same root. Um, to be real and royal means to have ground, land, inheritance. Ground, by the way, Eugene used to say, is the nitty gritty. It's the thing you've actually particularized. You've ground it, you've gone round it, you've broken it down into tiny little bits, and you know it thoroughly. You've been, you, when, you, when you go round in a situation, you've ground it right down, you bash it down, until you know everything that's in it. That's the nitty gritty, that's down to earth. And from that you can then, you know that land, you know what's in it, you know that what it's going to produce if you let the sun and the water get onto it. It means to have ground, land, inheritance to which one is committed and in which one one's works are manifested. Now they've been committed. We're actually putting energy into a place into a piece of work, into a project. And that work will manifest the energy you put in. Now that's scary, because you're going to see yourself reflected, or you, the energy you put into it, not yourself of course, but the energy you put in, at that time, at that moment, into that situation will be reflected back at you. You can't escape that. So although it's an important thing, and it's a developing thing, it is also a worrying thing as well. In the whirligig of time, land is the, is the vesture of authority. Notice you've got that author there in authority. And without it, the landless man lacks body, stability, and reality in himself. By the way, I'm taking man there as a generic term for male and female. So uh, there's no Im implication by me, and I'm sure that it's certainly not by David, of males over females. It makes no matter of one's real estate Sorry, if one's real estate consisted of ordered acres or the well-ruled flesh, it is the show and pro proof of royalty to all the world. Real, royal, and rule are all aspects of the function from which they all derive. A binding and controlling restraint which stimulates that which is bound to move and change. And in that, to differentiate itself and its condition. David's referring to two letters there, the R and the L. And they're to do with role, with rule, with real. This, he would say, is a differentiating, that's a vibrating letter. I can't roll my R's. I've been able to do it. Can't curl my tongue enough to do it. Can anyone roll their R's very Beautiful one. <laughs> Did you hear the vibration in that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's the vibration that separates things out and breaks them down into their bits. And the L, that wall, you slide your tongue along your palate, you're linking the front of your mouth with the back of your mouth. You're linking those things together. So that's the joining and that's the breaking up. And the two things that happen. You're breaking down the earth 
and you're joining it to a new situation. You're breaking down the people and you're linking them together in a different way. You're separating them all the time. Remember the story about Joseph in Egypt? He breaks the people down for Pharaoh. He bashes them by, first of all, he knows that there's a famine coming. So he takes from everybody for seven years grain and stores it in a great big silo. Pharaoh was a bit confused by this. You can imagine. He entered seven years, which are the seven lean years. He sells the grain back to them. Notice that he sells it back to them. He doesn't give it back to them. He sells it back to them. So that by the end of that process, Pharaoh is extremely rich and Joseph is very highly thought of. Then keep on reading. He then sends the people in the north to the south and the people in the south to the north. He mixes them up his way. He breaks all the ties and the symbols and their associations from before and puts them back into different places. He can then rule them and organize them because they've lost their own organization. Okay? Now that's the process which is terrifying to human beings. It's the process of being a refugee, of being damaged, of being charged about. The system breaks down the rulership of all the, the relationships of family, etc., the village states, and rebuilds them into a different form by the people coming into the cities from the countryside. It's horrendous for them because they're bound to be robbed, battered, pulverized, turned about, turned upside down, and used in a different way. And that's what the process is about because it's an evolving process. And to evolve to the next level, they have to become so much more sophisticated, so much faster in the way that they respond. And there's lots and lots of stories about the difference, the speed of reactions to people in the cities, to people in the country. <coughs> we think faster. Somebody was listening to somebody there said, yeah, most people in cities are out of breath. You know, they <laughs> stop them to ask directions. They go, ah, I'm not telling you. It's the March Hare, isn't it? Right. Real, royal, and rural aspects of the function from which they all derive. The binding and controlling is the L. Restraint, which stimulates that which is bound to move and change. The moving and changing is the R function. The vibration, which Alan's just given you a wonderful example of. Um, without bond or limitation, the wall around it, there is no stimulus for the growth of hierarchy or the establishment of what is contained in the restraint of enclosure. Containment, impediment at any level. We experience ourselves with heightened awareness. If we tighten our muscles to hold ourselves, we know ourselves more clearly than when in relaxation. In the state of being held, we have a sense of presence. Beingness is the state of control and therefore finiting limitation. 